59 seats are at stake in the last phase of these elections that are taking place across seven states. Bihar, Himachal Pradesh, Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh, Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal and one Union Territory of Chandigarh. Thanks for joining us. I'm Harsha Subramaniam. The question we are asking is, is what's at stake for the BJP? And will this phase decide if Prime Minister Modi is coming back to office? To discuss this, I'm joined by Nishila Hebbar, political editor of The Hindu, Amitabh Tiwari, political commentator and strategist. We'll also be joined by Aditi Fadnis in just a short while. Amitabh, I'll start with you. The BJP is defending 30 seats in this, in this phase. What are the chances and how critical is this phase really? So this phase is very critical because uh, Modi is himself contesting from Varanasi, mm. which is the eastern UP. Uh, uh, 13 seats are up for grabs there. And last time, BJP had won all the 13 seats there. Mm. Even if you combine the vote share of SP and BSP, NDA is ahead by 6%. Mm. That is assuming a seamless transfer of votes. Mm. So NDA is better placed in this phase in UP. If you come to Bihar, uh, there are eight seats. And again, uh, NDA had won six seats out of them. Mm. On most of the seats in Bihar, what has happened is that the NDA has a significant edge over the MGP. Mm. That is almost as high as 15% in, in across seats. Mm. And in most of the seats, what has happened is that both the uh, UPA as well as, or the MGP as well as the NDA mm. have put up same cast candidates. Mm. Whether it is Sasaram, whether it is uh, Baksar, whether it is uh, Karakat. So whoever is able to get the maximum support from the other major caste sure. will be able to win this uh, uh, seats in, in, in Bihar. Okay. And Congress had only three seats out of these 59 mm. last time. So it is a very, very important phase for Congress too mm. if it wants to get to the 100 mark number. Okay. I'll get to Bihar in just a moment. But what is interesting is 24 out of these 59 seats, the BJP won by a small margin in 2014. For example, Hoshiarpur in Punjab, 1.5% margin, Ghazipur in Uttar Pradesh, 3.2%. Uh, my question is, and it's still I'll come to you. How significant do you think this is equally uh, for, for the Congress if it wants to consolidate its position? Well, I've always been saying at the beginning of this very long drudge of an election that uh, even at the beginning, there was one party which is expected to cross or, or stay close to the 200 mark, even if you'd like look at a very bad case scenario. And uh, the principal opposition's best case scenario is to just cross uh, the 100 uh, point. Now, I agree with Amitabh when he said that this, this particular phase, Congress has only three seats, and uh, they will be looking to make uh, further inroads uh, in this particular last phase if they have to cross that 100 mark. They have a good chance in Punjab. Their allies have a good chance in Jharkhand. And uh, Madhya Pradesh too, because uh, the seats that are going into polls at this point of time are the Malwa Nimar uh, section. And uh, the eight seats there, and uh, basically the 66 assembly seats, which in the 2018 uh, assembly polls, uh, you know, BJP only won 21, whereas in 2013 they had won uh, 56 out of these uh, 66 seats. Mm. So there was a pushback uh, in that uh, area, and it was long considered the, the stronghold of, of the BJP. Right. So Congress will be hoping that between Punjab and Madhya Pradesh, they are able to score, uh, 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 you know, their strike rate improves a, a, a lot more. Okay, let, uh, let me, let's me let talk about Uttar Pradesh in specific. 13 seats are at stake. Prime Minister Modi is the star candidate in Varanasi, as we were talking about, which I suppose he will win. Uh, but what about the rest, especially where it's expected to be a close contest? Aditi Fadnis, what, what do you think is likely to happen? Well, some of the seats which are going to the polls uh, in Uttar Pradesh are were even earlier in the at the height of the Modi wave, uh, quite contested. Uh, one of them, for instance, is Ghazipur. Uh, the Manoj Sinha won that seat at the height of the Modi wave by a margin of just 33,000 votes mm. at a time when the, the two opposition parties were fighting against each other. Mm. This time they are united. So uh, Afzal Ansari is by no means uh, uh, a model of uh, you know parliamentary values and rectitude. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, in that area, he is popular. Uh, and uh, he could give... Uh, Manoj Sinha uh, uh, run for his money. Similarly, uh, in Gorakhpur, Gorakhpur is a very, very interesting seat because, uh, as you know, it is Yogi Adityanath's seat and uh, the opposition, can, the United Opposition uh, beat Yogi Adityanath's, uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure if he was his candidate, 
uh, beat the BJP candidate in the by-election that took place after Yogi Adityanath got elected to the assembly and resigned from the seat uh, from the Lok Sabha seat. Mm. So uh, against this background, uh, it's a very complex uh, seat because there are men, mul- there are multipolar centers of power. Sure. One is Yogi Adityanath and the Mutt. Mm. The other is the BJP. Mm. The third is the RSS. Very few people know, for instance, that Yogi Adityanath, although the RSS and the Mutt uh, have almost a common boundary wall, mm. uh, Yogi Adityanath did not step into the RSS office for nearly 20 years mm. after you know he uh, after he joined the the Mutt, as it were. Mm. So uh, there is a, a, a very uh, very subtle, very understated sense of rivalry mm. uh, in uh, within these three. Mm. And uh, uh, the on the other side is uh, a very important caste, the Nishad, mm. uh, whose leader uh, has decamped to the BJP, okay. but whose other leader is contesting as as a United Opposition candidate. Okay. So and BJP has fielded. Sure. Uh, no, I, 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 a point well, well made and well taken, Nadhi. Uh, I, I want to talk about Madhya Pradesh a bit. Eight seats at stake in Madhya Pradesh, where there is a direct fight between the Congress and the BJP. Uh, Sadhvi Pragya Thakur's comments have created a controversy over Nathuram Godse. The, you've seen the BJP subsequently distancing from it. Uh, and you know, do you believe this is likely to influence the voting in any manner? Uh, Amitabh, uh, her seat is done, but for, for the rest, would, the, would this have any impact? You would think? I wouldn't say it have it will have much uh, much impact in the seats there because mm. what has happened is that this is a Malwa Niwad region mm. where BJP seats actually halved in the 2018 assembly uh, polls. Right. This is this includes Indore. Mm. This includes Ujjain, which is a very uh, religious place. Mm. And out of the 45 Vidhan Sabha seats, Congress is ahead in 25, whereas BJP was ahead in only 19. Correct. This is also a hotbed of agrarian distress because the months of firing took place here. Mm. So these issues will actually uh, have a more important bearing on the Madhya Pradesh results mm. than the Sadhya, uh, Sadhvi uh, Pragya comments, in my opinion. Okay, Nishra, you want to come in on that? Do you think Sadhvi's comments will have any impact? No, I agree with Amitabh in as much as uh, it may not specifically affect voting uh, or disrupt all patterns of voting, specifically since the BJP has stepped in and the, and the party president has uh, initiated disciplinary action against her. But uh, it does raise a question mark in every other space where this uh, election is going on. As yet another line in the sand, you know, which distinguishes between uh, ideology and other things. And uh, specifically on the question of Mahatma Gandhi, on which uh, BJP has always been a little of the defense, because somebody or the other from their party keeps popping up and saying these uh, very laudatory things about Mahatma Gandhi. No. Uh, Aditi, you want to come in on this, this, this sort of debate that we have seen uh, yeah. over Godse versus Gandhi? Um, I mean, this is what this is the politics that we have today. But you know, does it have? Do you think they'll have any any influence at all at the ballot box? Well, you know, I am a reporter, so I specialize in the trivia mm. and the trivial. And I'm just wondering how, if uh, if uh, Pragya Thakur uh, gets elected, how on earth is the BJP going to rein her in? Because she is the uh, Sadhvi Niranjan Jyoti Mark II. Mm. Uh, she has already got the party uh, in a serious in serious trouble on the Hemant Karkare remark. Correct. Now she's gone and said something about Gandhiji. Mm. And, you know, I mean, there are just too many of these uh, free-spirited individuals floating around in the BJP right now. Uh, uh, Uma Bharti used to be one such until she was uh, very firmly squashed uh, by the party high command. Correct. And uh, the meeting between Uma Bharti and uh, Sadhvi and this Pragya Thakur uh, was a very emotional meeting, I think, because both saw kindred spirit in each other. But uh, the point is, uh, you know, BJP has all these, all these loose cannons. I, I really don't know if uh, they, they are okay. uh, amenable to disciplinary action from anyone. But uh, Ramji, as uh, Pragya Thakur has said, okay. to mere Ramji hai, to main to <laughs> okay. Uh, which brings me to the question of Bengal. Nine seats in Bengal. Again, un- unprecedented violence on the streets of Kolkata. Damage to Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar prompting the election commission to come in. Uh, now there's a debate over the election commission's actions itself. Uh, has that become a poll issue for, 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 for the rest of the seats as well, Amitabh? 
No, again, I mean, we saw there was violence there, and mm. the debate is whether it should, the, the, the action should have been taken uh, before, or before or after. But, I mean, uh, EC was just in giving 24 hours to all the parties so that every party gets some time to finish its campaign on time. Correct. Because if, if it would have been done uh, with immediate effect, everybody again would have complained. Mm. See, West Bengal is very important because it is in the top five states mm. if you count by Modi's rallies this time. Mm. Modi and Shah hope that they will be able to get some seats here mm. and uh, in turn compensate for the losses in the Hindi heartland. Mm. Uh, left has a very important role here to play. Left got around 30% vote share in 2014. Mm. So it all depends upon the collapse of the left. Mm. And left and Congress together got 40%. So the uh, they were primarily anti Mamata or anti TMC votes. Mm. If BJP gets even half of the votes of left, mm. then it will win easily 10 to 12 seats. Mm. And Mamata scored 34 last time. So if she has prime ministerial ambitions, mm. she needs to get at least 30 because Mayawati on the other side with the support of Akhilesh is likely to turn off with 35, 40 seats mm. as per uh, a general consensus. Correct. So that is why Mamata is getting very jittery. Mm. If BJP gains, it will be at the expense of Congress left mm. as well as making some dent in the TMC uh, uh, votes. Mind you, last time what happened is that Mamata won 25 out of 34 seats just because of the split of votes. Correct. We say BJP won this much, mm. that much. Mamata won 25 out of 34. Mm. So if there is any consolidation in favor of BJP, mm. there will be trouble for Mamata. But that we'll have to see uh, on, on 23rd. Uh, Nishila, you want to come in on this? You know, we've, we've obviously seen quite a bit of, uh, or at least the report saying that there has been a groundswell of support increasing for the BJP uh, in Bengal. Do you think that enhanced support will actually translate to votes this time or seats this time? Well, the BJP has been working on its project West Bengal for a long time. Around four years ago, Mr. Amit Shah had unveiled a list of 113 seats where the BJP had either come second or third or registered a significant, significant number of votes in 2014 and said that. Uh, party can only expand towards there because everywhere else they have been maxed out. They got figured very largely in these plans. And, uh, the, you know, making Mukul Roy join the party was uh, a very, very important part of that plan because Mukul Roy is a man who was the backroom boy for Mamata Banerjee and helped her set up her electoral machinery in that state. So he understands uh, the electorate. He also understands uh, the important key people and uh, other things that you require to win uh, elections, you know, on the ground there. So he had handed over a list in turn of 32 seats uh, where the BJP could push forward looking at demographics, looking at fast voting patterns and the fact that uh, despite having nearly 30% Muslim population in the state, there will be 32 seats where the BJP uh, could find that the, this population is not determining. Uh, it, it's not determining who's going to win there. Uh, uh, like Tripura, I think the BJP has also been very successful in conveying that they are the oppositional force which has the heft and the muscle to take on uh, the TNC because uh, 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 politics is not very pretty in West Bengal. It's not pretty in our entire country, but certainly not in West Bengal. And uh, muscle makes a big point, aggression. Are you, are you ready to take on the aggression of the ruling party? All of that makes a lot of uh, dent, a lot of impact on voters. So if I have uh, found that a lot of voters are wearing around to the view that it is Mr. Modi and the BJP and Mr. Shah uh, who have the head to take on Mamata and whoever wants to oppose her could very well wear to us. Okay, I have one time for one last round of questioning, and this is on 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 in the state of Bihar. The fight is on for eight seats in Pataliputra Lalu's daughter Misa Bharti is taking on Ram Kripal Yadav, who was a former aide of Lalu. Uh, Aditi, what are the dynamics at play at Bihar this time? How much sway does Lalu Yadav hold at all if he does? I am not sure if uh, Naluji has much sway. Mm. Uh, I mean, things are being said in his name and decisions are being taken in his name, but I am not really very sure. In fact, uh, many are uh, are uh, you know, lamenting the fact that Laluji is not uh, not there. Uh, but uh, I think much more important is going to be the uh, the proportions of the of what I think is going to be a pretty much a, a, a clean sweep by the BJP JDU alliance. Um, there's going to be a, 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 you know, despite the fact that uh, that the opposition 
has joined forces. Uh, there are serious fault lines uh, within the opposition, and I'm really not sure if they're going to be able to uh, withstand the, the combined uh, force of the caste dynamic that Nitish Kumar brings, on the, brings to the table, as well as the upper caste uh, angle that uh, BJP seeks to use. I mean, the last word with you, Bihar. Uh, how significant this is, and uh, you know, uh, Aditi, Aditi, you know, means that, or at least implies that this. It, the advantage clearly is with the with Nitish Kumar BJP front. Yeah, I, I agree with Aditi mm. in that sense because I said earlier, mm. NDA has an advantage of uh, greater than 15 percent in most of the seats here. Mm. And last time, two seats were won by RLSP, mm. which has moved or shifted to. Uh, Mahagadbandan mm. and RLSP is likely to face tougher contest in both these seats. Uh, one of these seats, Nalanda, was won by uh, JDU in spite of fighting independently. Mm. So if you add votes of uh, 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 NDA, mm. it is likely to sail through easily. Mm. As I again said earlier that on, on most of these seats, caste is going to play a key role. Both the candidates on most of these seats belong to the same caste. If they are able to bring the upper caste or the Dalits onto their bandwagon, uh, uh, mostly that candidate is likely to win and in in this case it is likely to be NDA because there is no Mayavati here. Mm. The Dalit vote is with the Ram Vilas Paswan mm. or, and the Mahadalit vote also because Nitish had created that category. The Mahadalit vote also majorly despite of Manji being it in MGB mm. is with NDA mm. and that's what give, gives NDA the edge. Okay. This is the last lap and this is how it plays. Uh, many thanks indeed for joining us. Amitabh Tiwari, Nishtila Hebar, Aditi Fadnis for joining us with your perspectives. Let's wait and watch how the story unfolds on the 23rd of May. If you have been, thank you so much for watching.